Okay, call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen for September 29th, 2020 to order. Roll call, please. Yes, good evening. All the selectmen are present, as is Town Administrator Derek Sullivan. Mr. Bowen, Town Council, will not be with us this evening. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mr. Campina. I like the pacing. <laughs> uh, announcements, Alan. Uh, okay, first off, um, <laughs> those uh, fellow members of the Jewish faith, uh, Yom Kippur was yesterday, it was always a fun day, it was basically fasting for 24 hours, no work, no business, n nothing else but that, plus prayers all day. Um, it's an interesting uh, holiday because you ask um, you're basically praying for all the dead who's passed away in the last year and also for people who have died maybe 40, 50 years ago even. Yeah. Um, then when you get past that, then you have what we call uh, asking God forgiveness for all our sins that we did and also people who also sinned. And it's uh, interesting. It takes about an hour. There's probably over 100 that we read off uh, on the actual service and stuff. And it's, uh, I finally feel it where Jewish guilt comes from. One piece says forgive a person for a certain thing, and the next one says you should do just the opposite. So there's no question why we're confused in life as things go along. The only nice thing about it is you basically you have a clean slate starting today, and you have a whole year to go back at it again and then change it again. Wow. That's it. Nothing. Jim, you know anything? What are we doing now? Announcements. For an announcement? Announcements. For an announcement. Yeah, we did talk, um, could be in layers on, but, but briefly, uh, we were talking the other day and uh, touched on the subject of um, adjudicatory boards and uh, for the associate members to uh, try to get some training in their first year to attend yeah. some courses. So uh, I think we, we briefly touched on that and um, we might want to send something out to anybody in the associate uh, positions and uh, maybe uh, find some programs to attend. That's an important thing, uh, not just to go to the meetings, but to attend something um, outside of the board. Yeah, um, so, an understanding of the regulations you're dealing with. Right, so yeah, that's an announcement, I guess. Um, uh, I'll, yeah. That'll keep it brief. brief. Okay. Just, as, just as an update for Jim, normally in September uh, there are courses for at least three or four days every week in as many as seven or eight, depending on locations all over the state. Unfor sorry, Bob. Unfortunately, this year, because of the COVID, there are no courses this year. Yeah, and each, each, each of those groups are sometimes is um, organizations throughout the state which will run... Yeah program specific for what they do and you know it's just a little something it's important because of their regional planning or they call rpas there's 13 of them all over the state yeah. and they're the ones who run the programs and then with the concom you get the state conservation commission that runs a program yeah so. that, that's in holy oak in the planning yeah. um, it, maybe they'll do it uh, online you know yeah it's yeah. unfortunate i'm hoping they do something because i know I'm, i took making notes while you guys are talking so yeah i think i i'm the first five years on the planning board i averaged about 80 a year that I actually did. That's just you. That's just me. I, have, I ended up with enough points for a degree, actually. <laughs> it, is, it is important, though. It's one of the areas that we're very weak in. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thanks. Judy? Yes, I have several. Thank you. Um, would like to remind people that Damien's Pantry is open every Thursday and Saturday from 9.30 to 11.30. Clients can visit every four weeks. Um, you need to bring identification if you're signing up for the first time. Good Shepherd's Table takeout meals are every Thursday from 4 to 5. Good Shepherd has a food pantry the first Tuesday of the month from 3 to 5. Turning Point and Baby Point have day resource centers for the homeless and near homeless. They have a website and they also have a phone number of 508 291-0535 if you need help with 
being nearly homeless if you have young children and you're not able to afford um, care. Mm. I want to congratulate the Wareham, Key, Wareham High School Key Club, which adopted Minot Avenue five years ago under the Don't Trash Wareham uh, banner. Each semester, with the exception of this spring semester, the Key Club group goes out and picks up the junk, trash, detritus, and whatever else you want to call it, along Minot Avenue. This year, um, they were aided, as they are every year, by Tom Bickey, who loads up his pickup truck and takes the junk to the dump. Uh, Key Club is a community-minded service club, and we're very proud to have them as partners at Don't Trash Wareham. Thanks go to A.D. Makepeace and the Wareham Fire Department. They started a challenge back in May to see which group could raise the most um, donations in terms of blood donations for the American Red Cross and the South Coast Health uh, Conglomerate. Um, they have raised over 130 donations since May, and they are going to continue through the end of the year. They have three more dates where you can sign up to uh, donate October 21st, November 17th, December 16th, and you can register at admakepeace.com. The uh, challenge between Makepeace and the fire department, the Wareham Fire Department, netted $100 to their favorite charity, which happened to be Don't Trash Wareham. The dog park affiliation of Wareham, otherwise known as DPAWS, which was started in 2014 by a group of people who wanted a dog park in Wareham, has met its, uh, number, its first goal of raising $10,000 mostly through your donations of cans and bottles. Um, so they are in the process of writing their Stanton grant for the completion of the dog park. Um, they are going to be having a winter fundraiser and it will be, you will pay a certain amount of money to submit a picture of your dog and it's going to be a calendar contest. So the dog the winning dog will be on the cover, and he or she may be sprinkled throughout, but there will probably be 12 winners in a calendar that is then sold to the community. Um, I urge you to support that when it comes out. And certainly those of us who are dog owners are going to be sending in donations and pictures of our favorites, okay? And speaking of pictures, I just want to say that the social media groups in this town produce some of the ma most fabulous photographs of Wareham. Thank you so much for the birds, the sunsets, the boats, even beach pictures. You guys and gals are doing a really wonderful job of promoting Wareham's beauty, and I thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody here for citizens' comments? Doesn't look like it. Uh, board comments. Yeah. Where is she? Hmm? Where is she? She's in the garage sleeping. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, board comments. Alan? Um, I'm going to do the governor's release under the COVID-19 update, just so you know, under B, because it fits better there than where we usually stick it. Uh, the other thing is I've been asked probably five or six times in the last four or five days about Halloween, Halloween parties, et cetera. The report I'll give in a little bit explains some of that, but basically with the change of the governor's rules today, step two, which Wareham will fit into, uh, there'll be the possibility of people having outdoor parties, and I'll give you the numbers and stuff, but it looks like if people basically practice, you know, social distancing, masks, whatever, there can be some Halloween parties instead of nothing at all. That's the only thing I have right now. Okay, thanks. Patrick? No, I'm good. Judy? I'm going to do it later on. Judy? Uh, no, thank you. Jim? No. Okay, I don't have anything either. Uh, appointments, reappointments, interviews. Don't have any licenses and permits. Yes, we have an application from Red Robin, 2421 Cranberry Highway, Wareham, for a temporary outdoor seating liquor license. This is um, issued under the rules and regulations uh, for the 
increased areas of, for outdoor seating per the governor. Um, the applicant has fulfilled all of the requirements with the exception of the Board of Health. And the Board of Health will sign off on the outdoor seating when the seating plan is complete and okay. compliant with the guidelines. So um, we know that that hasn't been done, but, but they understand, um, the Board of Health understands that that would have to be done before this license was issued. So moved. So the motion would be to... Conditional motion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but it... it it it's not traditional because you've got to add the t following conditional conditional okay the, Conditional uh, on them getting a board health sign off exactly. that, that's patrick's motion right yes okay can i get a second second okay motion by patrick seconded by judy all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed abstain five zero zero uh collection bins do we want to wait on this since that's always an interesting issue and you've even got it um, on the agenda the only place we've ever allowed these in recent times has been at the school yep and we then, actually yeah because they have to take care of them as far as we're concerned right because everywhere else they turn into be a junk collector yeah we actually do have on the agenda an application from the school well through the school by bay state textile inc which has been licensed by this board for um three or four years since we started yep. the process the um, business manager from the school has asked for two locations one would be um, right out here at Spillane Field, and the other would be at the high school. They had uh, bins at Decus, but they took them away because they got to be garbage pits. Yeah. So m my recommendation would be, and we waive the fee for the school, of the fee is $100. Yeah. My recommendation would be to um, approve the application from Bay State Textile Inc. for the collection bins at Wareham High School and Wareham Middle School. It's I not middle motion. school. It's actually <laughs> Wareham High School. I guess that really is technically middle school. Um, I just have one caveat yeah. there. there one me. there and one down the other. There's, exactly. there's one there and there's... None for Decus? No, they took Decus away because they were getting mattresses and dead yeah, chairs. It, was, it became and, a drop-off. Yeah, it yeah. became what it shouldn't have been. Location. Yep. yep. Patrick? I have one caveat, though. I, uh, I, I want to see it conditional that it remains clean and, and used properly, or we can order it be removed immediately. Well, we can anyway. Well, but I'm just, I'm just saying, so when they get a license, they think they can do it forever. With the, Lord, with the lords of the bins. And the, ones, the only ones that we've allowed so far around town uh, was the ones at Decus, and they turned in to be a collection pit, yep. and they were a problem, now they're gone. So now they're coming up here, and they're going to put them up by the high school and over here, right? Here. No, they've been here for the, the same time. They had them here at the high school and at Decus. So the high school was still... The high school was fine. Was there? Okay. This one here, I call it Spillane, but I guess it's technically Spillane, yeah. middle. It's fine also. And Decus. And yep. these two have always okay. been fine. It was the Decus. All right. I just want to make sure everybody realizes that if yeah, they turn oh, yeah. into a pit, the they're out of here. Problem. They, they, and they I want the, cus the company that's handling them to understand that. They, oh, yeah. yeah. They're gone. They know. The school has also stepped up and has said they'd be responsible as well. Good, because I, I don't want to have any more of these why things. Why they had them removed. Yeah, the school was the one that yanked it out of Deca, so they didn't have to be told. This is, this okay, is the reason. Okay, we have a motion from Me. Alan. Alan, Alan beat you to it. Second. Uh, motion by Alan, seconded by Judy. Jim has a question. Yeah, so this is just a general question. Um, when you have multiple um, locations, would it be a hundred dollars per location yes so it's basically we're waiving two hundred dollar fee two hundred dollars in fees for the yep. school uh -huh. that's correct okay school because benefits are on it so well we'll only be taking it out of our own pocket if we did that just what um, if we if we if we made them pay we're just taking it out of our own pockets no, I'm anyway just, i'm just <laughs> asking for a clarification i didn't yeah no i get you about yeah. waiving the fee i want to know if it was per per site and it wasn't just a Oh yeah, that's all. Thank you. No, it's per bin. 
Okay. Yeah, it's per bin. Yeah. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, five zero zero. All righty, uh, let's jump down. And Tom. just let me update you, just um, let me update you. We have discovered at least two illegal bins in town. We have sent the um, landowner, the property owner, and the owner of the bins letters telling them they have 10 days to either apply and whatever or start paying the fine because they are in fact dump sites where are they uh one is at noonan trucking across from west wareham okay and then there's another one i'm not sure of the address but it's on what i call the east side of cranberry highway in the west wareham side no in the east wareham in the side. east wareham yeah. side hmm. and, and what did you ask that they apply Either they apply or they remove them. Yeah. Okie dokie. Thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, I guess now we're all set from the presentation regarding the sewer project financing from the State Revolving Fund. Come on up, gentlemen. Hey, good evening. Good Thank evening. Thank you very much for having us. If you'll introduce yourselves again for the record. Sure. Uh, Russ Kleekamp, engineer with GHD. Um, um, Mark Drainville, uh, principal with GHD. Yeah. Could you both do me a favor and bring your mic closer to your mouth? Sure. You can almost this eat those things. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, why don't you fill us in on the, uh, what this loan uh, program is about and how it is we're eligible and what we need to do to get it. Sure, sure. Um, so I put a document together. I did watch the meeting um, from last time on YouTube, and I have to apologize for the uh, confusion with the way the article is written. And then, uh, sincerely, we do. You know, there, there should have been more information in there. So we put together a timeline of all the events, and it gives a breakdown of all the projects. I'd like to hand this out if that would be <laughs> fine. Yep, be acceptable. Great. Thanks, Russ. Sure you can. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, Russell. Can you tell me the other gentleman's name again? Uh, Mark Drainville. I, I, we need business cards. Yeah. Too. Mark, can you just spell your last name for me, please? D R A I N V as in Victor I L L E. Thank you. And is it Mark with a K or a C? C. Thank you. Thank you. you Thank you. So the um, projects that we're talking about for a water pollution control facility, this, uh, this, this, what we had talked about in the past, this $10 million number, this was actually developed um, started planning on it back in 2018, and it's comprised of three main projects. One of the projects is the installation of additional equalization basins. Um, the town, uh, the WPCF, is having an issue with very high INI flows. Um, so what we're proposing to do to help mitigate those is to put in some additional equalization. There's about 2 million gallons of capacity at the treatment facility right now, and we're proposing to add in an additional 2.7 million gallons. Looking back on our numbers, uh, we really, this came to light, at least for GHD, in March of 2018. If you remember, we had the three nor'easters back to back to back. Um, and it really put a lot of stress on the town's infrastructure, especially the sewer system. Um, we went back, looked at the flows, looked at the numbers, calculated that to handle that storm, the water pollution control facility would have needed uh, about 1.3 million gallons of additional equalization. We were fortunate to work with uh, CZM, the Office of Coastal Zone Management, to come up with a design and what we just opened for construction now for additional equalization basins that total up to 2.7 million. So we feel very confident that we have adequate sizing to help mitigate these higher INI flows. Now again, it's equalization. I won't go into the whole long-winded description of, of what it's for, but um, you don't want to be using these equalization basins to store wastewater for long periods of time. It's, it's not how equalization works, and it's not recommended for treatment facilities 
um, just because a lot of issues happen with that, odors for one um, and some other concerns. So um, the first project of that nine, well, let me say $10 million. One million of that is set aside for the engineering. That's a sum of money that the state revolving fund or the SRF fund, it will not cover that, so the town has to handle that separately. But for the construction funding, and also including the engineering during construction, the state revolving fund will pay for that. So that's the nine million. So that's where the 10 million comes from, the one million, nine million. Um, so we have the one project, the, the equalization basins. The second project is um, <coughs> addition of denitrific denitrification filters. Uh, few of the issues now is one that the plant is not in compliance with current codes. Yep. You have to be able to take the denitrification filters offline and still have a redundant filter to run your flow through. So we want to bring the plant back up to code. But even now, under the current conditions, the existing denitrification filters are seeing issues with solids, with plugging, with things like that. And we have no, we, if we take them offline, the WPCF is forced to do a non-permitted non diversion. Basically, they have to stop discharging to the Aguam River and they use a depression area, it's, it's, yeah. it's a red flag. It's something that we want to try to get away from. So that's the second project is to add in. We already had that. We already approved it, right? To add in the denitrification filters. Yeah. And then Jim, the Jim was just uh, sure. remembering that was already approved at town meeting, the denitrification. That, they've got that in the back of this document here. The second, uh, yeah, I, I saw that. And didn't we approve the uh, additional uh, pet too? Correct. I believe yeah. that was in the, the October 2019. Yeah, so, uh, so those 2. are 5. already approved. Correct. And then you want to add some new ones and bundle it together for one? Correct, to put okay. it underneath the Go funding. I just... Correct. Um, and then the last project is the odor control. We haven't come to a definitive solution with exactly what we're going to do. We had talked about potentially a, a primary basin or covering the existing basins. We have to, we just got a contract signed up that allows us to do um, the preliminary design to figure out what the best option is for the town, obviously trying to reduce the odors as much as possible for the lowest cost is usually the, you know, the most preferred alternative. Well, since we've been chasing it since 2008 at least, right. it's about time we do something, don't you think? Understood. Um, so those are our three, our three projects. Now, again, when we first started planning these projects, you know, we have this $10 million number. Those were... I wouldn't even call them estimates, more of order of magnitude. You know, we really didn't even have a set of design plans to do a detailed cost estimate, so we have to, we have to present the number. And this is one of the hardest parts about consulting engineering, because the first number you say for a project is a number that everybody remembers. So we have to have a number that's high enough to cover the projects, but we can't inflate it too much because, you know, it's a, this exorbitant number that, you know, you can't say it's going to be 30 million when you think it's going to be 10 million. So it's, it's a challenge <coughs> to, to get the right number. So as we've been moving forward through the years, um, for example, the additional equalization basins got funding, design funding through the Office of Coastal Zone Management, um, and then we just had the bid opening uh, for those. We had estimated, the engineer's estimate for the construction was uh, $2.1 million. Uh, we had five bids. They came in from 1.7 all the way up to 2.3. The average was very close to the 2.1. So we're fortunate getting that $1.7 million uh, bid from a very qualified contractor. So on the back of this document, I just put a list of you know, what the, the budgetary cost was and then what the actual cost. And it goes all the way back um, to even the plant evaluation. We had talked about a $150,000 number. Would that be enough to come up with definitive costs? And again, on the spot, we have to say, yep, yeah, we, we think it'll be enough. But then when we crunch the numbers, there's really 128,000 is what we came up with. The total budget for the equalization basins was 2.5 million. Uh, now we can see the total budget or the actual cost is you know, 1.874. So there's a difference there. Uh, the engineering, this million dollar engineering that we're talking about, because we got some grants to offset the engineering fees associated with the equalization basins, the actual engineering number is $550,000. We'll be presenting that agreement to the uh, Board of Sewer Commissioners at the next meeting uh, and talking about that. So we can start better planning what these, again, for the engineering, I mean, that's something the town has to cover. So it's not going to be the million dollars, it's the $550,000, you know, provided it goes through the Sewer Commission and the, the necessary approvals. Um, but we still have the denite filter and the odor control um, that's out there. We're, we're talking now with uh, Mr. Campina, the director of the WPCF, about the denitrification filters and getting final sizing and putting the effort into that. And then we also have the, the odor control, which is a little bit of a, I don't want to call it a wild card, but if we end up covering, if we determine that covering the existing um, equalization lagoons out there now is the best alternative, we've seen some, seen some very high estimates in the past. Um, so we want to be able to capture that entire $9 million. 
So the essence of the article, and I also printed out you know, verbatim, and I can hand this out if, if uh, any of the members would like to see this. This is the guidance from DEP, but it basically says that the town has to demonstrate um, it has pre-approved the, the total project cost, both ineligible and eligible. So for this, it would be the $10 million, uh, $10 million, $10 million total. Some of these. I would need a copy of that for the minutes, please. Thank you. This is directly from the Thank you. SRF application. Thank you. So this is where we'd have to have at a town meeting article, the, um, a warrant article to appropriate the borrowing of, of the $10 million total for this. Now, in the past, at the last two town meetings, I believe we've checked off the list some of these projects. Mm. So again, I'm not the expert in writing warrant articles, so maybe we can have a discussion about the proper wording and the proper structure of the, of the article for this town meeting. Yeah. Um, with that, I'll open it up for questions. If well, bond council is going to have to get involved in that, hmm? yeah, bond already, council, right? We sent it to bond council. You did? Yeah. Okay, so we'll so wait and see. And they'll they'll remedy it through the motion. Yeah. So they'll yeah. be um, just not just your presentation, but just so, just so you understand. Then we'll also I think the odor we haven't done yet, right. we haven't approved yet. So you'll see that in the capital I, capital article being approved uh, as capital, but this will still be the funding source for right. it. So we'll list it. Yeah, yeah, because it, it clearly says that both both approved and unappro uh, not approved yet. So yes. yeah, that's fine. I get it. Okay. I think everybody gets that, right? Sorry, yeah, we could just go. And I just, if I could add one more thing with this uh, SRF application, it's a, uh, a little bit of a bear of an application to put together. It's usually several inches thick, and the DEP makes us get all sorts of forms signed. Um, there are forms that the town will need to sign. This application is due on October 15th. We can submit it electronically. It was a little hectic with the pandemic and the timing of everything, so we were able to communicate with DEP. They have relaxed the, the um, requirement to have complete design plans and specifications. We can submit that as an amendment to the application somewhere in the February, March, which is great. It gives us a few months to work on that. Um, I, I believe I did include, there was two forms that the Board of Selectmen need to sign. And they basically give, the, it acknowledges the town administrator can be the signatory for the town. Okay. Um, that's the gist of it. Now I did email those. I can offer that, um, if you'd like, we can probably have a pretty close PDF of the whole application for the next meeting if the board would like to see that application before they sign anything. Um, I think that's October 6th, but by October 15th, we do need to, to try to get all these forms completed and signed. We, we do have the two forms, the authority to file and the certifying authority to file both sign, signing pieces of paper. I, I have a couple of questions. Go ahead. Sure. Okay. Um, so your firm is applying for the grants? So it's the town, the town would be applying for the, the application, the loan application. We're assisting the town with developing that application. You're writing the grant applications on behalf of the town? Correct. Okay. Um, uh, one of my peers said that we had been chasing this rabbit since 2008. Um, certainly the issue of odor has been an issue for many years. Um, so I guess my question is, presume we go ahead with this, presume everything gets approved, Pre presume everything gets bonded, presume everything gets built, are we done or or is the fact that the capacity of the sewer plant itself going to become an issue 
So very, very good questions. Um, let me start with the odors. So the main issue now is that you have uh, two roughly one acre ponds of raw wastewater. It is very challenging to hide. If those are left <laughs> open, you can, there's all sorts of techniques you can do to minimize it, but there's always gonna be an odor. So this, this is why we're looking at a much more costly, but a much more effective option. If you can cover that and capture the air and, and focus it and treat it, something whether it's through a filter or some type of technology, you can dramatically reduce it. I will never say that we will eliminate odors. It's a wastewater treatment plant. It gets thousands and thousands of households of raw sewage coming in, so there will always be odors there. Um, but we can greatly uh, reduce those odors. And even what we're doing now with these additional equalization basins mm -hmm. is we're doing, um, we're setting them up so you can do what we call midstream equalization. We can pull off the clarifier so it's partially treated water. We don't, in the event of a, of a high, um, high rain or weather event, we can do midstream. So, so that should help out too. But the fact that you always have these two, two wide open acres of raw sewage is, is the generation of these. Okay, so yep. because I know a lot of people who complain about this a lot. Are there going to be more than those two basins? We're, we're building two more. You're right building now. two more. Correct. Are they just plain overfall, overflow, or are they going to be? Overflow is a very good term for it. Yes, it's a surplus. That was a terrible pun. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a. <laughs> that was really bad. Yeah, but he, what he's trying to say though is they can take them off the clarifier in some cases, and when you take it off the clarifier, then it's already partially treated, so the odor would be a lot less than putting raw sewage in there. Right. So, but what I'm saying is that the, the there will be four. Two of them will always be in service, and two of them will be oh my gosh, it's going to rain and we're going to have 15 feet of water coming down and blah, blah, blah. Yep. Those then go online. Correct. Do you ever rotate the two that are there out to, I don't know, do you clean these things? So that the, the two brand new ones become the, the ones that receive the daily effluent or whatever and the two that are there right now get scrubbed and cleaned out and become the overflow ones. Is there a, like a rotating way of doing that or is that not part of what no, makes it, sense? It, 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 that comes more into the operations of a plant whereas you know, design engineers, we design things and then you know, the plant operates it. But the way we've designed this, yes, it does give you the ability to divert raw wastewater into these new basins if you need to. So for example, if there was a hurricane forecast or you get some tremendous rain event and you want that ability to pass through so you don't overwhelm all your tanks and treatments and processes, you have that ability. Um, if we don't, now again, that's not expected to happen very frequently. That's, that's really not answering my question. Do, do, in other words, does it, does it have to go through those first two to get to the second two? No. It does pulls off the clarifier so it would go no so so the so the yeah your your question is um will the could the new basin serve kind of as a primary means of storing that's correct uh the raw wastewater the answer is is um that's not how they're currently uh, that's not for raw wastewater it's a that's an overflow equalization yeah so if they're an overflow for raw wastewater but they're a primary means of storing midstream uh okay i'm just a Yep. Regular human being. Yep. And if I have four holes in the ground and I use two of them regularly, but I have two more empty ones, doesn't it make sense to be able to rotate them so that they get cleaned and and used so that so that these these Judy, I think we should let them design the plant. I'm I'm asking No, that I question. can comment on that. It's yeah. Yeah. If, if, if you need question answered. We have two bases now that we're off. we rotate them. And we clean them okay. as, we go along as part of the process. Right. It's pretty labor intense, but it's done. The guys have to physically climb in there with hoses and wash it down the sump. And, and then we put that offline, let it dry, we wash it down. And then we run this one, and then we flop them on a weekly basis. And so we do that now. The two additional ones is to direct, because we have clarifiers and sand filters that were antiquated the day they were built, CDM was very sure to tell us the day the plant was built that it was already at capacity. And so those things, we have to divert those, and that's what the new basins are for, to take care of the secondary 
and it's specific for the secondary. They are going to add a connection if we get a major wet weather event that we've been experiencing more and more each year, so we have the capacity to fill all if we had to in a major wet weather event. Thank but you. That two. clarifies thank, what. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That clarifies what I was trying to get at, Mr. Campino. Thank you. Anything else? No. I just. Jim, um, I think the uh, the first three were were pretty much. You already ran through them at previous presentations, and I guess on the odor control, you just you don't know what you're going to do yet. It's a big question mark. You have some ideas, but no. we did. And so the, the ultimate is to cover everything. Now you got two major expanses. Yeah. And the difficulty is to put support that'll handle wind and snow and all the loading with the expanse. We looked into it yeah. and it can be quite costly. That's why we thought maybe if we two two hundred and fifty thousand gallons is peak flow per day, and the basins are designed for peak flow. So we have 250,000 gallons. We thought that maybe we could design a basin, cover it, and close it, and put odor control for the 250,000 that we do regularly. That was the design. So we have to look at those costs yeah. and make a final decision. Well, gotta, we should do something. I just, you know, um, thanks. Al? I don't think there's any way really to eliminate all odor. To say that we're going to get rid of all odor is really, it's not a fair statement to anybody. Uh, if you go down to Hyannis, I go down there usually during the summer, we have the concerts uh, down there, and you go right by uh, the back side of Hyannis, and you go right by the water pollution control facility. You know within about 1,000 feet when you're getting there, and 1,000 feet after you leave there. And that's a very enclosed system. That's probably the least one I've ever been to that you can barely smell. But there'll always be some odor. It depends on the wind, et cetera. So to say that we're going to eliminate the odor would, would be giving the residents a false security. But to say we're going to mitigate the odor as much as is humanly possible with the techniques that are available, I think is, the, is what our goal should be. That's a great point. It's about mitigating the quality of life. You can't, in any facility throughout the world, you can't eliminate odors by the nature of what we, what, what we do. So I agree with that. Who, who are you speaking to? You want me to go closer? Is, is yeah. that better? I don't. Is it on? I don't know. Green light. Lights. It's green. Okay. Yep. You got to pull it close enough to it was eat just it. Just a little far away, I think. Sorry it's about good. that. But but odors in any plant are going to be there because you have primary, secondary, and different fourth types of odors. One of the questions we ask, and it aggravates people, is what are you smelling? Does it smell like fish? Does it smell like rotten eggs? What's it smell like? Because each part of the facility gives off its own distinct odor. So that's why we try to attack that specific odor. But odors in what we do, wastewater, is what it is. I, there's no other way I can sugarcoat it. If you make croutons, you can smell the garlic. If you make chocolate, you can smell the chocolate. <laughs> we process waste. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. And our job is to mitigate to yep. give people a quality maybe, of life. Maybe you should start making, making sugar then or some kind. Well, we, we like Candy we or some kind. Maybe that can help you. If we could, we would, for sure. Yeah. We have a chocolatier in town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good on this. Okay, anything I, else? I just Do have you? one other question. Sure. Um, I sort of snuck in five questions and you got away with answering two. What about the um, capacity when these projects are all done? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do we stand in terms of where can we go from there? Sure, sure. Um, so we do have a contract right now that we've authorized to do a complete plant evaluation, which includes a detailed look at the flows, the capacity remaining, what other systems in the plant um, may be undersized, and then additional concerns moving on that. Um, so at the next sewer commissioner's meeting, we are going to give a presentation on uh, the remaining flow uh, at the treatment facility. Um, I try to be very respectful of the chain of command, so I always try to report first the, to the uh, WPCF superintendent, then to the sewer commissioners, town administrator, then to the board. Um, every time I have broken that in the past, someone gets very mad at me, so I try to stick to the, the chain of command. Um, but we are at the next meeting, so there is going to be a discussion about the flows, and you are getting close to capacity. Uh, this plant is unique because it can design and treat up to 2 million gallons a day, but your discharge permit is for 1.56. Normally, those numbers are the same. In this case, you're permitted to discharge less than what the treatment facility can actually treat. Um, so we are getting close to that. 1.56 and would like to uh, present our findings to the to, to the sewer commissioners at the next meeting. 
Um, but then beyond that, uh, absolutely, the, the next biggest priority we'd see is um, getting additional discharge capacity. How do you do that? There's several different mechanisms that can be looked at and evaluated. We do have a contract now to evaluate future groundwater discharge sites. There's been a lot of discussion about a shared site potentially with the public safety complex um, that's off Minot Road. Uh, we are potentially looking at grounds right next to the treatment facility and then a, a, a third parcel. So uh, that's the other priority is since we are getting close to our capacity, where do we go from there? What do we do? What's the um, alternative that meets the town's best, uh, that's in the best interest for the town? And just to follow up on that, s presume that, I don't know, 15% of what goes into the system is I and I, okay? If you cure that problem, which I believe you're in the process of doing by relining, does, what effect does that have on the capacity? It's, it's a challenging problem. Every municipal sewer system deals with I and I. Um, a lot of times when you treat or seal one pipe that has a lot of cracks and I and I, it pushes that problem to somewhere else. You know, that water right. follows a path of least resistance. Right. So, I and I, it's, and this is a terribly frustrating topic to talk about because you're treating clean water. I get it. It's a lot coming from sump pumps, and yes, it's taking up your capacity that you're, you're um, pay, you know, paying for to, to design and treat. Go ahead. Okay, so, so this is something that I'm glad you, uh, was my next thing to talk about, really, is we as um, selectmen have the ability to, um, that the sewer commissioners don't have, to deal with some of these issues legally. Yep. And we're going to have to do that. Enough is enough about this because we probably have, am I, I'm, I'm probably close, 500,000 gallons of I and I from sump pumps? At certain times of the year, absolutely. Okay, so half a million gallons. A day? A day. A day. A day. <laughs> so we're talking about a huge amount. Now, unfortunately, <clears throat> what would have been a better deal you go over uh, Wee Wee Annick, uh, I happen to think of right over there. Not Wee Wee Annick, um, uh, you know. Swift. In, in, uh, no, Indy. Um, uh, I'm not telling you where you are. No, no, I'm, I'm, on, uh, I'm near uh, Gateway there, Gateway well, Restaurant. Yeah. Oh, Wee Wee Annick. Wee Wee Annick. I guess yeah. it's Wee Wee Annick. Okay. So over at Wee Wee Annick, they have, just about everybody over there pumps from their basement. Almost everybody does. There's water, there's water table there. They're all pumping. And when we hooked everybody up to sewer, we took away their septic tanks and their leach fields that could have been very helpful. But the DEP said to us, well, you've got to close them down properly, which means filling them with sand and, you know, whatever. So they just simply took and hooked them up to, their, to the sewer pipe because they were going in there anyway. Right? So now they're going in the sewer pipe instead of into this system that they were using. There were some who were putting them out on the ground. And, of course, we went out and yelled at them about that because now they've got ice on the street in the wintertime. So that's a bad, you're not supposed to do that either, discharge on a public way. So we, we sort of locked them into a place. And now we've got them to the point where they are just putting it into the sewer system. And nobody's going to tell you, hey, we're putting it in the sewer system. Okay, they're not going to tell you that because everybody knows they're not supposed to be doing it. But that's where we as selectmen and uh, town administration are going to have to do something. We're going to have to come up with a plan that uh, f resolves this issue. Um, one of it may be uh, somebody might have to have, uh, we might have to give them some ability to be able to put some kind of a leach field in their yard. Um, to be able to put the put it in there so they take it out of our system because 500,000 gallons of flow is a heck of a lot of flow you know how much we could connect in this town with another 500,000 gallons of sewer per day it'd be a lot that's for sure a lot of places and a lot of our especially our commercial areas which we're going to need as we all know as time goes on the more and more we're going to need in our commercial areas. You know, um, maybe maybe the uh, water pollution control facility could have some grants for uh, people to, to put in these dry wells or wells to accept the um, the uh, gray water. Uh, the, no, just no. The water they're pumping out of the solid. That's gray water. Gray That's water. considered gray water. Uh, whatever you want to call it. It's actually and fresh. Hold on, hold on a minute. I got that. It's my fresh dime water. here, Patrick. So, you know, maybe you can do that and come up with some grant program 
to help the people with the cost of providing, you know, a place to put it. Instead of just, you know, we go around this all the time, all the time, and nothing gets done. It's hard to enforce. You go down, you find the people. So maybe we need to look at, at a different way to address it. I, I agree. The, the bottom Thanks. line with everything is economics, right? We all know economics is the, is the deciding factor in all the decisions we make. And one of the things you tell a homeowner to get it out, they have to spend the money to get it out. And so to your point, the DEP is beginning to offer programs <laughs> that are offer studying and grant money to do some of these yeah, things. Yeah, and maybe that maybe money is starting to come yeah. in, and when it comes in, we'll definitely apply. And maybe maybe we can do something. Um, I think we have a pretty good uh, kitty. You do, not we. Maybe you can come up with a program. You know, well, it's food know, for thought. We have know. a kitty. But yeah. I want to say that the kitty is spoken for. It's like when I look at my assets liabilities yeah, we just and I say, okay, I have money, but what I, what's I'm liable for, I have no money. But to your point, no, we right. could probably fund some things or, or find some ways. But we, but just, we just found $3 million oh, that, well, you, I didn't know that. that you lost. No, you did, right? Because you're going to bundle it into a, a then, bond and a long-term loan, yes. so you just gain that money back in your kitty. So anyhow, it's, that's for another discussion, yep, another it is. day. You know, he's, he's right. We, yeah, we, we, if out. we come up with a solution for them, it'll make it easier. <laughs> but in the same instance, it's illegal. Yeah. You can't do it, it's illegal. And we, we, have, we have been working with this for way too long now in trying to come up with an approach. Everybody seems too afraid to get involved, go to courts, do whatever's required. And I think that we need to take that on as a board, not you guys to figure out how we're going to make that work. It's a state issue. So there are some towns that have dealt Absolutely. with it, some towns that haven't. But it's a state issue. It's a, for everybody. So some research as to what others are doing may be a, you know, a, a good thing. But it is an issue. State, and I'm sure other states are having the issue, too. And it's illegal at all levels, local, state, and federal. But it's a tough enforcement. It's a very tough enforcement. We had talked about the MSF program, and as the town's going to have to spend tons of money to do a lot of treatment of, of stormwater, there may be an opportunity to, to migrate this to stormwater by putting some pipes in that they can connect to that can take to the stormwater that's going to be treated. So there's a lot of things in the works, and the DEP has got a program now to help you design that. They're not funding, but to help you design that. So it's yeah. something else we can look at, but there's a lot of opportunities. But the bottom line is it's, it's economics. And folks, when you tell them to spend another $3,000 or $5,000 to get it out, it's a challenge to a lot of people. Let me just say one more thing. So the other possibility right now, we, we don't have any, we're, we're running out of being able to put it into, um, into the river, okay? So we're running out of space there. So, and it doesn't look like right now we're gonna be able to get that line down to the canal, okay? So that's probably not gonna happen for quite a while. So the other thing is to have some subsurface disposal underneath some place, whatever, and put it in the ground. Now, there's a problem inherent with that. The problem inherent with that is, is the cost is extremely high. First, you put it in the ground. It might last 20 years, 25 if you're lucky. If you take care of it and you handle it exactly right, if not, then you've got to rip it out and replace it and start over again because that's just how it is. I mean, let's face it. It's a costly way to do it. It's a very serious cost. But if we can take 500,000 gallons back and it costs us some money to go get it, it might cost us a lot less than it is to put 500,000 gallons into the ground, which is what we're talking about. I, I just, Mr. Chair, I just want to make sure if we stop 500,000 gallons of sump pump, we're going to instantly get 500,000 gallons of capacity? No, that's, that, that's a misconception. And I, I want to say the 500,000 gallons that we get per day is wet weather events. So what happens, we have a wet weather event so it stops raining for three to four days after those sump pumps are pumping like crazy, which brings a, quite a bit of flow to the plant. Um, and so that is a real number. And so at those particular times of the year, it puts us out of permit. It puts us, uh, we're discharging greater than what our peak flows are designed to handle, and our, our, whether it be hourly or daily. So to answer your question, it's not like we're going to have the 500,000 gallons forever. We may have a portion of it because we, the engineers would probably spread that over a year and say, okay, this is a real number that you could, you could actually use. And I don't know what that's going to be. They'd have to analyze that well, to be sure. Well, uh, well uh, just, just I, I, I know you're saying that those sump pumps are pumping more during the, the rain events. Uh, that's correct. 
but they're also pumping all the time. Well, there's some that will, absolutely, because we're still seeing some now. So there are some that yeah, I mean, because I, I know because yeah, I've been in be an all-time low. Been right in now. some of those places. It's really low. Yeah, right now it's at a low. You're absolutely right. It's been lowest in in a long time. So you're right. They're pumping less water now than they would have been. But I imagine you're seeing that at the plant too. Well, it's it's weird you say that because our flows are pretty close to steady. I mean, we're averaging a million gallons really? a day. Really. So I don't know where it's coming from. I'm thinking that people are home now using more water. Oh, maybe that's, that's, that could be true, policy, too, because everybody is kind of locked at home. Everybody's locked down and people yeah. working at home, so water's coming yeah, out. Yeah, so it's so staying the same. Yeah. So they're use. using real water now, real stuff. But yeah, but that's, that's absolutely the case. Uh, water, I mean, I've, I've been, you know, obviously in many houses with some pumps uh, for one reason or another, whether I'm doing a septic or whatever, and you see them go on and off all the time. And it's not raining out. There's nothing going on outside. But they need to take that water out from under the foundation and move it. And it's going. I mean, it just is. And so you're getting it, you know, less than when it's actually raining and pouring. But you're still getting some of it. And that's the numbers engineers will calculate. Exactly. And that's where you've got to get a calculation basis. But still, the point is that we could get, gain a bunch of gallons, uh, even if you gained half of them. <laughs> That's 250,000. So one very quick item to add, and we'd be happy to look at this, is that um, you know obviously we'd look back and review the past INI reports, but we do have the water use information for all the sewer parcels, so we can look at that over the course of a year. Um, you take the water use, you multiply it by a factor of either 0 0.8 or 0 0.9, because the majority of water that comes into a home ends up going out as, as gray water or wastewater. Um, so we can very easily see what the water use is, and we can compare that to what the flows of the plant are. You deduct the water use from the flows after you convert it to wastewater. That will give you, it won't give you like that peak five, you know, the highest number, but it will give you an average gallons per day of I and I per year, and that's probably a helpful number to have. So we'd, we'd be more than happy to look at that. That's how we determine Swiss speech. We got a gallon of water coming in and three gallons coming out. We knew there was a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's easy enough to figure, to figure yeah. that out. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Um, I'm ready to make a motion. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to explain what the motions are going to be. The first one is the authority to file. Board of Selectmen signature is going to authorize and acknowledge that the WPCF improvements are in the public interest and, a ne and necessary to protect pub public health. Board of Selectmen signatures also state that the town administrator is authorized to act as representative of the applicant, the town of Wareham, to file, sign, for, accept, and take whatever action is necessary for the project and the SRF application. The authority to file states that the loan, if awarded, shall be used for construction activities and that the applicant agrees to pay the applicant's share of the project costs. I move that we move, uh, sign the authority to file form. We have a motion by Second. Judy, seconded by Allen. All in oh. favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstain by zero zero. This, this okay. comes out of the uh, wastewater treatment plant enterprise fund, correct? Payments. All our, all our parts, yes, and, you, and the payment. Okay, debt just, I thought so. Yes, all the debt will be paid out of the enterprise and the engineering fees also. This Okay, the second one is certifying the authority to file. This document that I'm going to move um, certifies that the Board of Selectmen voted to, to authorize the town administrator to act on behalf of the applicant, the town of Wareham, for the WPCF improvements fiscal year 2021. The document should include the date of the vote by the Board of Selectmen, which it would. So I move to sign the certifying authority to file. Second. Alan was raising his hand. All right, uh, motion by Judy, way. second by Alan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 500 on that. Thank you. I guess that much. takes care of the immediate business. Thank you. It does. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you very much. And, and uh, you'll be working with Derek and sure. to yeah, uh, and get the motion for town meeting. At some then. point, we'll be back in some form to give, I think, numbers, something maybe a little more concrete on the uh, odor yeah. elimination. Mm -hmm. before town meeting because right? yeah, that would be yeah. helpful so. and Derek I want to point out that the authorization for nine if there's less than then we can still Borrow. clarify that at the actual borrowing and signing of the right. documents yeah so Perfect. we'll get a harder number awesome thank you thanks thank you very everyone. much thanks, for your time. Really thank you all very much thank, thank you. you thank you Jimmy you were quiet tonight
He's, a, he's pretty noisy, that guy, isn't he? <laughs> hey, bud. He's a good man. It, it, I can give you a photocopy of it in two minutes. That'd be great if you could, yeah. Yeah, I can, as soon as it's signed. Uh, I just signed an appointment here. Yep. Ross, you care to tell interesting stories while we're waiting with this dead air? Is there any uh, sort of topic you'd like to hear? <laughs> <laughs> like, the military bouncing at the bars for eight years. I can, I can juggle things if you'd like. You were a bouncer. <laughs> Save that for the next day. Bob, the short, the long, the short was, I don't believe it's uh, for our public airways, <laughs> the stories. <laughs> Okay, we're going to jump down and do the refuse update while Judy is off making copies. We have a... Uh, let, let Mr. Sullivan... Uh, I think we, we've got a meeting tomorrow. I know we've been... Uh, I need to meet, meet up with... Or we don't, I guess. Yeah, we, we, we'll... I, yeah, hopefully you and I can get together if Ooh. you can figure out your schedule. Yep. Um, we're always flexible here, right? And um, unfortunately, Carver um, is having a selectman's meeting at 9 a.m. They do, they try to focus on certain business. You know, they have the regular meeting, then the off week. They, so they're trying to do it during the day because uh, it works out for one of the members. Um, unfortunately, uh, so we're going to meet and, and uh, discuss some things. Derek put together some, uh, has come up with a co concept and you're kind of bundling uh, costs and, and whatnot um, for curbside and uh, um, transfer station and or just transfer station. And also some, uh, I think he, he garnered some language from another town on um, on the process, but would, would that be part of the bylaws? Yeah, it's part of, part of the bylaw. I handed yeah. that out last week. If there, if anybody, so, if you can look through it, it was, it was very half baked, as you, yeah. you probably saw. It. We're trying to include so any suggestions. Uh, after I get any of the feedback, I'll obviously we'll we'll go through it again. Yeah. I think Jim and I would that be a good document for he and I to go through. Yeah, that's so so. Hopefully, we can do a little <laughs> of that. Um, I always like things in. Um, word format ever so i can highlight and gotcha so a hard copy is good but when you get it you know if you send it to something in word uh, pdf doesn't help me i don't have a pdf editor but um however you have it just so i can highlight and uh, so uh yeah we're moving forward we'll see what what happens there's a lot of it's 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 very interesting. Let's put it that way. A lot of moving parts. Oh, and, and and just the process of getting through committee and making sure that everything is done properly so that you didn't leave something open to. Yep. <clears throat> Future problems or interpretation. Interpretation and Thank you. you know. Yeah. Responsibility best laid, best laid shirking plans, and all that right? good stuff. Yeah, best laid plans, and all of a sudden, whoa, what? Wait a minute. There sure are a lot of clever people out there. Oh yeah. So yeah. that's where we are. Thank I hope you. you're catching every single one of them. <laughs> we good now? I'm good. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll jump up to the COVID-19 update. I know Alan wanted to speak to that. Yep. So. Do you have anything on yours? Uh, I was. I had some of the same things as you. I think so. That's. Okay. We didn't have our usual weekly LGAC meeting today. The governor did speak at about 1.30 this afternoon and the lieutenant governor. 
and basically uh, happened what I expected. They're now moving to anyone who is in the white or green area. We're going to what they call step two of phase three. And I'm just going to read this because it's not fully uh, vetted out. I think over the next couple of days it will be a lot clearer. As of Monday, of course, the restaurants were able to open up their bars somewhat as long as they were serving food and the spacing in the restaurant's capacity was also increased as far as inside to 10 people at a table. Um, so let me just read this through and hopefully the public will have some idea because it affects Halloween, I believe, also. Um, so this will be effective on October 5th, which I believe is next Monday. Communities designated as red will remain in step one of phase three. Baker announced that a revised gathering orders and industry specific guidance and protocols for a range of phase one, two, and three businesses are being updated. In lower risk communities, effective October 5th, the following sectors will be eligible to reopen with restrictions. Indoor performance venues will be permitted to open with a 50% capacity with a maximum of 250 people. Outdoor performance venues capacity will increase to 50% with a maximum of 250 people. For arcades and indoor and outdoor recreation business, additional step two activities like trampolines, obstacle courses, roller rinks, and laser tag will be permitted to open and capacity will be increased to 50%. Fitting rooms will be permitted to open in all types of retail stores, gyms, mu museums, libraries, driving and flight schools will be permitted to increase their capacity to 50%. If a community drops into the red category, it will need to move back to step one, phase three, uh, you, until it is out of the red category. And in order to do that, it has to have three consecutive Department of Public Health weekly reports showing that. Communities have the option to proceed more slowly into step two if they choose. Consistent with the administration's position that cities and towns can decide to be more restrictive than the statewide rules during the opening process. Though they cannot opt to reopen more aggressively than the state's orders and guidance. The limit for indoor gatherings remains at a maximum of 25 people for all communities. Outdoor gatherings at private residences and back, private backyards will remain at a maximum of 50 for people of all communities. Outdoor gatherings at event venues and in public settings will have a limit of 50 people in step one communities and a limit of 100 people in lower risk step two communities which this might help with some of the Halloween parties per se that people put on. Outdoor gatherings, during a press briefing, the Governor Baker said that the orders governing situations where there isn't applicable uh, sector specific guidance, in other words, businesses such as restaurants and retail stores operate in a capacity limit set in the guidance for those activities, not the gathering orders. Uh, the Department of Public Health survey basically has the impact and that's really what it is. But again, it's not really clear completely because uh, one of the things that was mentioned, uh, large uh, stadium events, obviously like the Patriots, et cetera, still are not allowed for you know, stuff like that. They can't reopen them with the you old know, right, couple thousand people. Right, large entertainment because you got the 250 cap. Yep. So, so uh, I, would, you know, I would ask people over the next couple of days to check and see what the state is releasing for information. The Department of Public Health will have it. You can also go into the COVID-19 state of Massachusetts website and there should be a better detail. The details today were a little fuzzy to say the least. Yep. Thank you. And I think we've been asked, well, is the town going to ban Halloween or not? Yep. And I think that's, that's, yeah, that's not an accurate question, if you will. It's not something we really, really do but to give to give you an idea of what's going to happen greater than 31 days from now in the situation I, I i don't think we can give you a reliable answer uh we've had we have five active cases in town but we've had a total of 14 cases in september that could spike given given anything uh you know and people are concerned about their children and it's I, I'm not one to give, you know, child rearing advice. We, we have two young children, but what we've been doing is talking to them about these things, talking to them about Halloween, saying, hey guys, we don't know what's going to happen. 
it's but it's going to be different halloween's going to be different this year so let's just expect that and whatever happens we're going to have a great time and i think that needs to be the message instead of driving insecurities into the kids <coughs> let's just let them know be honest our kids are smart our kids are resilient and you want to know what at the end of the day they're going to enjoy some candy well as an example i was at the ymca this morning and we were talking just about what they're going to do for the halloween party they do every year and as of right now they're probably going to have people come in under a time frame come in get the gift of treat and, and immediately go right back out because there's no way they can plan on having a hundred 50 whatever people coming in and out all together yep. but I think it's up to the individual parents because at the end of the day it's their call they have to stay within the rules and we can't really say yes or no completely because they have certain guidelines now they can follow but hopefully people will be conservative because I'm not worried too much about the kids as the kids picking it up and giving it to parents and grandparents because I believe and I think the numbers still hold out that 90% of the deaths for the United States is 55 and older so I'm not in a very good place. 83. 83 no, and older. No trick-or-treating for you. You know, 10 years ago, 55 sounded a lot older to me. <laughs> it, it did back then because people living to 80 and 90 easily. Yep. Well, it's kind anything. of a shame. On the back nine. Um, that's it. Jim? Um, I'm, it's, you know, it, I, I think Derek kind of covered it nicely and, you know, the individuals who give out candy, they might just say, you know, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, All you, know, you need is one person who's ill and, it, it, you know, and if they're giving out candy or whatever. and um, Spread it everywhere. Yeah, so it, it's an individual choice at this point in time. I don't know if the state will come out with guidelines and, and take the pressure off the, the local towns. And <laughs> well, it's, we're still a week or two away from that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, their guidelines right now are wear a mask, wash your hands. If you feel ill, don't participate. Yep. So it's, that's, it's that's good advice all around for everything, yeah. not yeah. just Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. If you go into like 7-Eleven and stuff now, you can go up to their you know, soda dispensers and stuff and self-serve. But there's basically hand sanitizer there. You can't bring your own mug or your own cup. And there's a whole process in order to even do that right now. And that just changed on Monday as well. Yep. So it's, it's tight. They're not making it easy. Yeah, Cumberland Farms 99 cent coffees are back. Yes, so. it is. <laughs> That's it for me. Okay, well, anything else for that? No? Uh, let's jump down here. The ratify of yeah, hiring. Ratify the hiring. Um, the town has made a conditional offer to Eva Golden for the position of natural resources officer. I would ask that we ratify the hiring second okay motion by judy who seconded patrick patrick second by patrick all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed abstain five zero zero thank just, you uh, just just quick uh yep. i went over and uh spoke with doreen and uh had a had a pretty good pool of uh candidates a large pool and yep. um i want to thank them they're doing a nice job i appreciate it and i'm kind of learning what the process and how they do things and it's nice to see thanks okay thank you uh recommendations votes for the 2020 annual fall town meeting warrant uh some of these i'm going to invite people to the meeting next week so uh, for example i think if there's any questions for planning uh we, we should have ken available uh I don't know who from the Charter Review Group intends to present. The answers to any questions you have are right here, I believe. But okay. I, if it's okay with you, I will answer the questions. That's fine. If we want to get going on this, uh, we'll just go through the articles. Uh, just run down the list. Well, we put them all on already, right? Yeah, we put them all on. These are just the recommendation votes. So are we going to start recommending votes? I don't know if there's that many we can do. Yeah, we can. We can do the. Yeah, we can do some. We can do the free cash. We can prior year's bills. We can do the peg. Yeah, I've got the list here. Uh, capital plan isn't ready yet, correct? Right. Transfer correct. free cash is no. No, we. I don't have anything for you. Okay. Don't we don't know what the prior year bills are? None so we far. None so far. Good. 
PEG access receipts. We know what that is. That's our, we have to pay WCTV every six months. Move so. to recommend. Second. Motion to recommend by Patrick, seconded by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstains, Five zero zero. Union contracts we don't have yet. Uh, gifts of land, what about both of those? Move to Move accept. to recommend. Move to recommend, second. Okay, both of them? Yes. yes. Okay, move to recommend both by Patrick, seconded by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. abstain. I abstain on that one. And which, um, uh, which you're abstaining on one or the other? Both. You're going to abstain on both. Okay, so 401. Okay, 401. Uh, sign bylaw, I think we should hold off. Drive throughs should hold off. Uh, transfer of Deca School. Move to recommend. Transfer? Oh, they, yes, move to recommend. I'll second. Okay. Uh, and again, this is just to transfer it from the school committee's control to the Board of Selectmen's control. Yeah. When it's um, no longer a school. When it's no longer being used as a school. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they made that clear. Hmm? They clarified that in the Yes, in the they article. did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, five zero zero. McKinney Vento, that's just a semi-annual appropriation. Second. Move to recommend by Patrick, seconded by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. No. No. Yeah, you 410. You voted no to put it on too, right? You remember right? Did you vote no to put it, not put it on? Yeah. Okay, 410. Okay. Uh, marijuana testing lab will wait. Residential use definitions will wait. Uh, harbor services appropriation. We Move know it. what the dollar amounts are. Do we have the dollar Move. amounts? Yeah, we it was like it was in it was in the article yeah. yes I, I move it are those the correct ones uh, mr uh, town administrator yeah you should uh, do you have the copy in front of you let me say the amended article do you have the warrant there i i don't have a warrant here All right. it, it's fine it's right, as long as he knows whether they're the you correct have the ones warrant right there hmm? do you have the warrant booted up i hmm. just wanted to make sure you had the explanations on it. no i don't no you know um do you know do you know what uh which boat we're replacing the engines on the it's the main boat i don't know the exact i don't know which whether that is a specific name but right. it's it's their main main okay. boat that they utilize the the one that has the 27 uh, foot whaler the main one i think is a 27 foot yeah, whaler yeah it's got two 300 horsepower Mercury. Yeah, this is to replace up. two 2010 300 horsepower. Yeah, those motors are so. completely worn out, Jim. What was it, like 40? How much is it? We're estimating the... Um, the They're like 20 grand a piece, aren't they? More than that. Yeah, no, we, we estimate for about the... Could, could run us all together 60 grand because we're also going to equip and install and everything, so we're covering the total costs of that. Yeah, and that's a discount also. Yeah. Those motors with... With throttle controls and everything, are running about forty thousand dollars each now. Yeah, thousand a thousand a horse. They Mercury Verados. Yeah, Mercury Verados supercharged. Big money. Yamaha's is just expensive. Whatever they want to do. Okay, do it, Dirac. I made a motion to recommend. Second. Motion to recommend by Judy. Seconded by Patrick. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Five zero zero. Uh, Wareham Village 1 rezoning will hold off. Uh, mm. Let's see, community preservation, that's just to uh, keep pay off the loan. Move si so. number 16, the Tremont Nail remediation. Okay, motion by okay. Judy, seconded by Allen. Oh. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 500. Uh, same with the fund reserves, these are the semi annual allocations. Move those. Second. Any questions? Yeah. Well, on, on the previous article, just just a question on um, we're paying the interest in the principal, correct? Yes. That's yes. Principal and interest, but there's two there's two on there. It's the short term and long term. You're paying the long term for the permanently financed portion. It hasn't been completely done, so you still have a band for the rest of it. And the reason why we permanently financed the other portion of it was it was large enough when we were going out for the school bond to include it with that to get the best possible rate. And that was just for the remediation. Correct. So, and we still, so the whole 
for I'm just gonna use the 1.4 million has not been totally spent on there most of it the majority has been spent and we're still in the uh, we're still whatever that sort of phase is checking double checking and make sure everything's the more bills will be coming in on it yeah so you still got a little bit so that's why you've got a large permanently financed portion and then there's still a band for what's been paid out and for the next couple bills until that's all done once that's closed out we'll permanently finance the rest of that portion as well right okay and you know i just i see the interest in the principles same thing on the dock yeah the dock has been um it does. The dock's all done. That's squared away. This should be the. These are the final payments. Should be three payments all to, all together. I think because we've already made at least two. I'll double check on that though. All right. Thanks. I just you know I see those numbers coming up and I hate seeing interest and. Yep. Um, <laughs> well, that's, short term stress especially. Yep. Thank you. Uh, CPC fund reserves. We, we have a motion for Judy and the, the second by Patrick. All in favor say aye. We already did that. I didn't call for a vote yet. Um, WPCF state revolving fund. Are we prepared to vote on that? Yes. Yes. So moved. Second. So since we're applying for it, I guess we better vote second. for it. Mm. Okay. Moved to recommend by Patrick, seconded by Judy. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. abstain. Five zero zero. Okay. You want to do the charter tonight? Sure. Do you want to Up do to you? Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. Uh, well, I'll let unless you, you would prefer, unless the board would prefer somebody who is does not have undue influence to explain it. Yeah. I don't have a problem. I don't need. Thank it. you. All right. Talk away. Okay. Chart one um, is, as explained on the documents at, on file on the website, on file with the town clerk, and on file under the charter review group, is the article that asks for changes or recommends changes to spelling, capitalization, punctuation, word order, um, presentation issues like instead of having a run-on paragraph there will be bullet items so that the document is easier to read it removes the bold-faced portions of the Charter which technically are not part of the Charter to an appendix it removes the two uh, previous introductions and minority and majority reports to appendices and technically they were not part of the Charter so that the Charter itself will be I think it's 36 pages long um, and will have those documents as appendices um, and not clutter up the presentation. The committee felt very strongly that the document should be clear, concise, readable, and understandable. And all of the changes recommended on chart one do that. Questions? On the board? Move to recommend. You have a question? Second. One quick question. Uh, the name of the, uh, the board of selectmen to the uh, select board, is that part of the changes in the section? Yes, sir. The uh, recommendation throughout the charter is to use gender neutral language in so far as is possible. So, Just want in, to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. so instead of saying yeah. board of selectmen, yeah, know. it will say I knew that. Thanks, though. <laughs> select board. Instead of saying um, he, it will say he or she. Instead of using a, um, a gender specific title, we would use, for instance, the town administrator shall, as opposed to he shall, OK? So it's very, very much up to date in common and accepted usage for language. Just so the board knows also, I've reached out to the Mass Selectors Association to reach out to the Mass Municipal Association to see if we can get the uh, state of Massachusetts uh, House and Senate 
<coughs> agree to rewrite all the Commonwealth of Massachusetts charter, etc., and change the language to Neutral Pacific. Can you say that again? Because I can't hear you, Alan. I'm sorry. We're basically looking to change the Mass General Laws into what we could call a neutral. Gender neutral. Gender. Thank you. Yeah. As, I ex as I explained before, when all this stuff was written, women couldn't vote, et cetera, so men were the only thing there was. That's why it was written the way it was. I don't have a problem with making things gender neutral, like saying town administrator or any of that. Never had any trouble with any of that. My problem is that the word selectman has nothing to do with men. It has to do with man in general and not anything to do with a, a gender. I don't, yeah. uh, the words that they want to replace this with uh, has the word man in it anyway. So it's no, it says select no. Board. no, I'm talking about select, select board. board, but they want to call it uh, human, humankind. No, no, I'm, t I'm talking about that's one of the things, right? Humankind is it we not? did not use that in the charter. No, they don't use it though. No, it's not in our charter, but it's it's one of the things they want to do. They want I to think Patrick's speaking globally. They want to yeah. Call it they get, it, yeah, globally, there is a movement to make it humankind. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that's well, the correct. Word man, men is still in there, is it not? Yeah, okay. But I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous to me. Maybe I'm old school, but you know, a dinosaur is a dinosaur, and I continue to to be a dinosaur whether I like whether I like it or not. There you go. Thanks, man. All right, let's pry him off the third rail. Uh, do we have a motion and a second? I thought I heard. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Five zero zero. Uh, the next portion, because I know for a fact that there may be some differing opinions on this board, uh, is broken out into nine subcategories on the warrant. Uh, That's correct. And it was done also in consultation with the town moderator because uh, that would make it easier for her to divide the question at town meeting instead of having a free-for-all over it. So... And I have prepared for you an explanation of the different sections of the charter, which are considered to be substantive changes. Chart two, also on file with the town clerk, also on file on the website, also on file under the charter review portion of the website. So um, not in any particular order, but if you would like me to continue, the first one of the substantive changes um, is that we deleted doesn't say that on this one um, we deleted the term newspaper because nowhere in the charter is a newspaper referred to any longer and we added or we recommended adding the words department head facilities fixture and media because those in fact are in use in the charter I apologize it doesn't say it the one on file does say that the uh, newspaper has been re removed for and the term is media now recommendation the second one the transitional provisions well as, as we go through oh, them why don't we just oh, vote yeah okay you know um jim i i'm not i'm not ready to vote on the second part tonight okay so could, it, it, yeah that's fine we can wait i mean i don't have a problem with that you. Uh, I, i've gone through i don't know 25 pages of it for a first read. Then I got to look at the first section, the second section. Yep. Do a second read. Um, I, I know there's going to be some differences, but um, I'm just not ready to vote but on each section because I got part of it here. Yep. And that's fine. Yeah, I'm just saying. So okay. However you want to do it. We can do it next week. Yeah, we can do it next week. This yeah, I think you'll wait. find that this is a very helpful way of this is, yeah, yeah. gathering. Ready? You're not them. ready. Yeah. yeah exactly. Okay. okay, so we'll get, gets us home in time for the debate. Gets us home in time for the debate. Oh, just wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you want to throw up every hour? You go watch that. I was going to say, I think good. we're doing a lot better job tonight than they're going to. Um, <laughs> Alan? We have an article, uh, which is a citizen's petition article. I just want to make a comment to the public. Uh, I spoke with uh, Ralph Sacamone on Thursday. Uh, on this particular article as far as what they did in Falmouth and what happened about four months ago in Chelsea. Um, Chelsea did theirs as a, their city, they did it as a, you know, basically, you know, council law itself. It's not a, a it's not a, just a, a thing that's in the zoning or anything else. It's, it's done as an actual law. What Falmouth did was the same thing. They, even though they were a town, they did it as a bylaw. 
Uh, so what happened last Wednesday, I believe, Ralph said that they had, they made a ruling. They had 14 liquor stores from Chelsea come to the ABCC, complain, you know, asking it to be thrown out. Uh, ABCC ruled on Wednesday last week that they supported the Chelsea actual rule what was passed. So Falmouth will be coming up as two other capes, two other towns in the Cape, and the article that's being presented to us all fall into the same category that's being presented as a bylaw. So if it passes a town meeting, it should get through the ABCC as well. I haven't heard from the AG's office, but right now it looks like it might go through all the way. And it's up to the legislature. Yeah. And it's up to yeah, the legislature, but it's... Right. Ultimately, because it's, you know, they're the final approval authority for any charter changes, so... Yeah, baby. Yep. It's, it's really not a charter change. It's an actual law, by law. Oh, okay, that's right. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. It's just going to be AG review. AG review. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to make it through if they don't have... Uh, and, and the question there is going to be, has the state... Uh, the His legal no. term is called cleared the field uh, by establishing its own regulations and what can be sold in the Commonwealth and so on and so forth. Uh, and are we you know, trespassing upon their territory? That's going to be the analysis yeah. when it goes up there. I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on the state because it's, we have basically five and you're probably going to have 15 to 20 more before the next year anyway. So it's going to put pressure to actually do something. Yeah. So we'll see. It's worth a shot. Should have just yeah. put them in the bottle exactly. bill. They could have solved the whole problem. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, no problem. Just put it in the bottle bill. Done. But we'll invite the uh, lead petitioner for that one. I agree. And, uh, yeah. and the same on the rename the school. Yep. Do the same with that. Invite the lead petitioner to come in and discuss that. Uh, the master plan. I'll move uh, to we all know. We all know what it is. I I'll don't move think. to recommend. Second. Second. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Alan. Everybody second it. Judy made the motion, Alan second. Everybody likes it. Okay. Uh, any discussion? We all know what it is. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. abstain, five, zero, zero. Uh, let's see. Are we ready to do 22 and 23, the solid waste? Nope. No? Nope. Okay. But well, they're not ready. No, they're, they're not ready, ready yeah. They're not ready. No, that's why. That's and tomorrow why he's got a to meeting. Say we're going to meet tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> we're going to wait until. Uh, I'm just going through them all. Until he gets it done, man. That's, that's right. okay. That's right. <laughs> trying to tick off the boxes here. You know, I got, I got Mr. Pigeon and the moderator job. yapping at my heels done, here to get we'll it done. Ready, so. Right? Do what we can. I agree. Yep. Okay. Well, I guess I'm we're we're all set with that. We took out about half of it, so that was good. Uh, the table. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're ready to recommend it, then we're ready to vote. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, you know? here you go. I like to see numbers. And yeah, yeah, I know. Not just a big open, <laughs> open we'll big hole it, in hey, the ground. Hey, we'll get it to you. <laughs> Nothing in it. <laughs> okay, uh, anybody got any 48-hour business? Alan? No. Patrick? No. Judy? No. Jim? 48 hours, no. Uh, I do have a little, a little thing here. We, we got something uh, from the town clerk today regarding a couple of gas stations. I'm not going to mention their names or their addresses that haven't uh, taken care of renewing their stool storage licenses, fuel storage licenses. And uh, I'd like to send them a letter saying, you got you to gotta get this renewed or you're going to face discipline on your license. Absolutely. If not, show cause. Remove their license. Yeah. Simple. Okay. Alan? We should make sure that one of those may or may not be the one that uh, uh, Sam on, bought a gas station on Cranberry Highway and moved the license so we could do cigarette sales onto Main Street Wareham. That okay, may, we'll it, confirm. It, it may be the reason like one of them didn't file because it's no longer a gas station. Yeah, I'll, con I'll confirm it in the records. I'm, I'll move that the chair be authorized to send the appropriate letters to the appropriate parties. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, five zero zero. Okay, I will get that taken care of. I saw that come through. Yeah. Mm. Town administrator report? No. Just no? No. <laughs> You're not, you, you, I'm getting out of here tonight. You, you don't Wants want to, to do home. it? You're not willing to do it? You have he doesn't to want say. to be here till 10 o'clock again. <laughs> Just yeah. no. He yeah. has kids. <laughs> All right, liaison reports. I think Alan got a little bit of his out of the way. Most of it. Good. Um, Judy reminded me that uh, 
we talked about, actually I talked about the Veterans Parade and Veterans Day. We said we were gonna write a proclamation, so I need the chair to physically write a proclamation. Yep. Probably check with Mr. White, who's putting it all together. Yep. Need that. Um, on last week on Wednesday, my usual Serpent Commission meeting, we brought some people in from Western Mass, uh, from the school there as well, <laughs> talking about solar siting and removal of trees, et cetera. And the way things are working was very informative and all 27 communities took away a lot of you know, positive information. And I forwarded everything to the town here as well with all the study groups, et cetera. Uh, we just got notification from FEMA. Uh, they'll be back at us with the maps again for June of 2021. Uh, so we need to put it on our schedule for a Springtown meeting. We have to go ahead and get this done so we don't run into the same situation again and we get stuck. Um, so again, we'll just make sure that gets done there. And I think that's uh, all I got. Okay, Patrick. All right, so uh, obviously one of my liaison projects was in here tonight with some of the things to do. Uh, the other thing I've asked them to do, um, as you well know, when we turned it over to them, they, they, have, they were supposed to work on getting the rate structure changed, which has been very difficult. They've been having a lot of dis different culty with the two districts yep. specifically. So I asked Jim to get a vote of his board to allow us to take it over. But certainly we have a lot more authority and a lot more ability to be able to get, even if it requires, because you know, that's public information. We, even if we have to get it by court order, we can get it. Uh, and enough is enough. You know what I mean? It's been oh, too yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. And we need to get those records. I think they got them from one, right? No, they didn't. They didn't get them from anybody, really. They get, got the initial ones to look at kind of thing. But nobody's committed to actually giving them to them on a regular basis. And that's why nothing's happened. So it keeps hanging out there, hanging out there, hanging out there, hanging out there. And uh, I was told that one of the boards has a problem with um, that if we start charging sewer rates based on water rates, people will use less water. Oh, for goodness That's sake. a good thing. And, uh, you know, I said, Jim, you're funny, because what I said is, well, isn't that what you try to do every summer when you tell them they can't use the water? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that should be a good thing, not a bad thing, right? But anyway, I asked them to do that. I'm hoping that they'll allow us to take it over uh, and handle it. It's, it. We just have more ability and more authority than they do to handle that kind of thing. When it comes to talking to entities outside of, of the, the sewer department, you know? Well, we would have to be the ones to work out an intermunicipal services exactly. agreement exactly. if we come we, to an agreement to get the data anyway. Exactly. So it might as well, might as well just be us. We'll exactly. just jump We've in. We've got to work out the agreement anyway in the yeah. end result. So it's just better if they just turn over and say, okay, you guys get it done yep. and we'll go and get it done. Okay. So he's, he's going to uh, put that on an agenda he's for put his it board on to his vote next on. Agenda. Okay. Yes. Okay, we'll see what their vote is. We'll go from there. Do you guys want to vote on, on doing that? Do we want to vote? Yeah. Should we? Well, do you want to do it, all of you? I do. I think we should. Uh, I think I'd, I'd love to do it. I'd love to start. Well, we have to wait till there's a request before we vote on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we got to have a request. They know? might not. They might not want to. I can't I mean, it's presume really what they're going to do. It's really up to them to decide. I mean, if they think they can handle it, it's fine. But I think they've had a lot of difficulty. Yeah. I I, I agree, and it, you know this has been an issue for not just since they took over forever. For yes. Long, and not having actual numbers, and you're doing an EDU. Um, so that's why the original, back in 2010, that's why the article was written to take the sewer commission away from the board of selectmen because nothing was happening, and the assumption was, which is another wonderful word, that they would have as a sewer commission as a separate organization, have plenty of time to get this thing done. It, it, and when we turned it over to the sewer commissioners, we had done a forensic audit and everything, so they had yeah, everything we had. in place. Yep. And we actually had, uh, I think we referred to him as Dr. Poop. Yep, Professor the, Poop. Yeah, that's what, I, that's it, why I called the consultant. But oh, I, look, I can't you know, blame them. They're the doing the process. Yeah, I know. I can't blame they're, them. They're, they're, they're doing the best they can. They're, they're in a tough spot. They just spot. don't have what we have. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. But that's what it is. I don't know, and it's just process, and you have to follow through. Exactly. Process and follow through, whether it's them or us. And somebody you has just to do can't, it. You just can't, you know, stop in the middle of it. So I, no. I, I agree. However you want to do it, and uh, <clears throat> I, I'm in favor of it. 
how you know what what they want to do and they put the request in and well yep. if they ask us I, I i asked them and he said that he thought it was a good idea so if he does it then that's fine and if it's well, not us i just want you to will. be aware it might become yep that's good thanks uh anything else patrick no. judy um no just want to remind everybody that the library even though it's closed is still open for business on certain days and you can it's actually, if you look at the numbers, the circulation numbers are up, um, which is fabulous. And I want to thank the employees in the library and all of the volunteers for all of the work that they do there. Okay, thank you. Jim. Um, just a quick couple of things. Um, Planning Board did a, did a hybrid uh, meeting yesterday, last night. So they did uh, Zoom and also, uh, you know, real time and live. And um, it was interesting. I like. I like. Uh, I think that's a good thing to do, and uh, they'll they'll get some of the wrinkles out of it as they move forward. You know, and and I think a lot of boards, um, want, want, you know, could adopt this approach, so that citizens at home, in order to keep the numbers down, and who are uncomfortable, can still participate through the Zoom application, while the board is actually running. Yep. Um, you know, someone who's administrating. So that's that's good, and I have to you know give him a pat in the back for for doing that and trying that, and um, you know thank Ken, and uh, he's kind of innovative in that sense and trying to move forward. Uh, so um, you know thanks. And uh, I was over to the Wareham Housing Authority today, and just so people know, um, they have a, a kiosk outside, a bulletin board outside of their office, which has. Um, affordable units which could be in other towns and also contact information for units within the town um, there's a couple different processes so um, it was a good chatting with them on that and uh, hopefully we can get some of that information and, and post it up in the affordable housing trust you know come up with like a little section so that people can go to it and, and know the process in order to get you know on the, um, on the list. lists in the application and the in the process and, and uh, as you know we got some uh um affordable housing vacancies outside of town which was yarmouth yeah. dennis and uh they sent us a notice yarmouth. yeah and um yeah you, know, you look at the the costs and it's still you know nine something up to 1500 and change but um the Plymouth Redevelopment Authority is like the clearinghouse for that, and um, and yet it goes through Yarmouth too. It's, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it was sent to us by Yarmouth Community Development, but if you're interested, you send the application to Plymouth Redevelopment, and I guess they do the lottery, the screening, and the lotteries and stuff. Okay. So um, yeah, I had to get that clarified. That's why I went over to. The Wareham Housing Authority, because they've they've been doing that for years yeah. and uh, similar things. So uh, that that's all. Did, did they mention the status of the four units that we funded? The what? The four units. No, you know what? Um, I will I will um, inquire. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sure the cost of a building hasn't gone down. <laughs> you, you know, I think two by fours in the last year went from like two dollars and twenty seven cents to four dollars. Yeah. Actually, you're up around seven dollars for for an eight foot two by four. Eight foot two by four, <laughs> and that's that's in like a month and a half. Yeah, they have gone crazy. Yeah, yeah they just recently went up twenty five percent again. Bucks a sheet. I mean, yo, yeah, it's gone crazy. You know how come? Because they can. It's how come? Because they can. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The demand's there, so they can charge what they want. Supply and demand. Yeah, it has gone out of this world. Okay, that's it. Then. Okay, thank you. <coughs> I don't have anything. Uh, we have a set of minutes. Yes, and move the approval of the minutes for September 22nd to 2020. We're all here. So moved to second, rather. Okay, motion by Judy, seconded by Patrick. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, 500. Move to authorize the payment of the law office of Richard P. Bowen. <laughs> Where is he? Second. Okay, motion to pay <laughs> town council by Judy, seconded by Patrick. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. abstain. Five zero zero on that. Okay. Alan. Motion to adjourn. 
Yay. <laughs> Second. Hey, look motion at this. By, oh, you, 20 you minutes two are and slow. Nine. Wow. Uh, motion What's by Alan, record? seconded by Jim. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed abstain, 500. Zero, zero. Thank you, Wareham. Myself. I need some entertainment. <laughs>